my name is Hannah Nicklin. I'm a narrative designer and writer with a theatre background. Um, and I mostly now work in video games uh, on narrative design and on writing for a variety of different types of games. Um, from puzzle games, which just need a little bit of sort of narrative framing to make them compelling, uh, to puzzle-driven narrative games, which need to work carefully with puzzles to make the puzzles convincing and part of the universe, to narrative-driven games, where it's all about the nar narrative design and um, the story that you're exploring through the game. So um, I take the approach of stories into different games um, from different points of view, always trying to um, make the game um, hold together more convincingly and more compellingly. I would say that my theatre background was quite quickly what uh, I would call interdisciplinary in that I have always looked to other art forms in order to um, see what other experiments and groundwork is being done in other art forms and how we can learn together. Um, so that um, is everything from understanding the history of art um, in lots of different forms up to like as a theatre maker now or as a game designer now, what films are you watching, what books are you reading, what exhibitions are you going to? Because they're all ways of examining people and how we live our lives together in society, which is what stories are interested in. So while I was trained as a playwright, quite quickly um, I got more interested in um, interactive works, um, in um, pieces that took audiences out of theatres and into the streets, using technology to deliver narrative experiences. Um, I also did a PhD in games influenced art and um, art influenced games and how we can use them to destroy capitalism. Um, didn't work yet, but you know, I'm still here, still fighting. Um, and otherwise, I suppose um, right now working in games, I feel like a lot of the craft of um, playwriting in particular, it's really useful and relevant. It, uh, a lot of the stuff around how you give characters voices, about structure. Um, I just gave a talk here at Indicade, which is about um, uh, long form storytelling techniques because a play or a film usually shapes around one particular hero or one small story, which you can explore in that two to four hour kind of time zone. But um, I think uh, a lot of games aim to be longer than four hours. And if you do go longer than that, I think we need new forms, new structures, new strategies to make the storytelling compelling and engaging. So which is why I gave a talk today about ensemble casts. So having more than one hero, having several characters who change and reflect on one another and give you a way to construct a story which is varied and compelling um, because you can leave one character and go to another and not have to keep on generating generating jeopardy for one single character who like everything bad has happened to this person just so a player could be interested. So I feel like I'll, um, I always try and um, stay aware of what's happening in dance, in uh, fine art, in all of the art forms that exist because there are always little gems that you can steal and apply and, and make game design and narrative design fresher and better. So uh, me and my band, I'm in a punk band, uh, and uh, we went into the streets of a city and spoke to people in the street and asked them what it meant for them to be from where they are from, all manner of people, different cities around the UK. And then um, at the end of the week, we would make a couple of songs based on what they told us. And we had this touring show, which was made up of um, songs from different cities and it would get and there would always be a song for your city as we were as we were there it was incredibly expensive to tour because it was a really long process and um but i think it's probably the thing that i am most proud of because it um genuinely put people's voices on stage but it didn't cleanse them like it took the anger actually we got a lot of um and this is Hey, a couple of years before the Brexit referendum kind of era. Um, and um, it was just after a huge period of austerity from the government. So like basically people had been punished by these rich people and you felt that anger with nowhere to go and punk felt like the perfect form to express it in. And that's a big part of my practice is always finding the right form to tell the story. Sometimes it's not a digital artwork. Sometimes it's something else. And the second thing that I suppose I might point to is a piece I did 
um, with a, a game designer called George Buckingham, um, and uh, who's involved with the company who made uh, Beasts of Balance. I don't know if you've heard of that. And um, with them, I um, uh, was involved with an occupation of a housing estate where a group of people who were being evicted for really bad reasons, um, just because they wanted to redevelop it into expensive flats, um, occupied their community and said, no, you're not going to demolish it. Um, and I, well, essentially I got some public funding to make a game, which is a tiny little interactive thing where you throw wood on a fire and every time a, wood, a piece of wood crackles and burns, you hear a little bit of their stories. What I mostly did is give almost all of that public funding over to the group. So it was kind of political fraud. And sometimes I think more important than the art that you make or the games that you make is making change in the real world. And uh, I would say that I was probably most proud of being able to give a chunk of money and resources to um, an activist group. Um, diversity is super important to me because I have uh, the privilege of um, being a, a white, uh, straight, middle-class woman from the Western world. And um, that gives me a platform which, wherever possible, I would like to try and uh, offer to other life experiences that aren't so well represented. Um, a lot of my theatre-influenced game work was what we would call in the UK community-based practices, where I went to communities in housing estates. I made a piece in a swimming pool with all the people who use the swimming pool, where I talked to people, I um, listened to their stories, and I would make interactive pieces of art out of the things that they told me. And there'd be an exhibition at the end of all of these digital artworks which people could play, and it was sort of their stories reflected back to them. Um, I try wherever possible. Now, I do a lot of freelance work, so sometimes I'm writing to contract. But when people hire me, I think that they know that they're getting someone who will try and diversify the casts that will um, try and make sure that there are other gender, sexualities, racial backgrounds represented within the narrative universe if I'm brought in at the beginning and then I have any ability to affect it. If I'm just um, brought in to like solve a problem at the last moment, then I have less um, ability to do that. But I would say that um, diversity is a, a concern of mine, which I try and address by like who are our heroes and what stories are they allowed to tell. There is a lot of work to do, but that's because there's a lot of work to do in general, not just within games, within society. Um, like there is some thing to be said for the work that I try and do in introducing diverse characters, but actually there's a point at which I should not be the person writing them. Like I can bring in consultants, I can pay people of color or people um, uh, who are gender diverse or of different sexualities to me, I can consult with them, but I think there's a point at which we actually need people making games who have diverse experiences. So for that reason, I do mentoring. For that reason, um, I think uh, teaching is super important, but also wherever possible, trying to address those structures that bring people into games. So um, that means things like running um, girls uh, coding like events and being a part of them and um, showing that more than just like maybe you're not into maths at when you're 12 years old and you don't really see yourself getting into programming. There are so many different areas of games that you can work on. It's such an interdisciplinary practice that if you're interested in stories, if you're interested in art, if you're interested in marketing, if you're interested in just making sure an office runs well, like we really need that. <laughs> so I think there's lots of room for um, diversifying our workforce and it can't just be uh, middle class white people at the end going, oh, I'm telling different people's stories. Like I also and other people also need to make sure that we um, build roots into it to overcome the barriers that exist in general society.